Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to E3 2021 Scott the Waz by Scott the Waz. Now, this is a pretty long video. I think it's just going to be discussing his thoughts on what E3 2021 was like, which, I mean, I feel like this could be a short video, because, I mean, E3 2021 was not, not great. Honestly, the only two that mattered were... Xbox and Bethesda, Xbox and Bethesda, and then also Nintendo, and that was really it. Uh, the rest were just, yeah, they had a ton of random stuff that, you know, not, I don't know, it wasn't really exciting. And then Ubisoft, it, they, yeah, they just talked about games. The only thing they, like, announced that I think was hype was the Mario Rabbids thing. But then again, Nintendo already... You know, announced that, and they even shadow dropped it. Technically, well, not really, but like, but yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing this is gonna be him just talking about his thoughts, and I want to see where this goes because it is a pretty long video. But yeah, anyways, guys, we're in the description. Make sure to Scott the Wise. Thanks for the description. Let's just get right into it. Hey, all, Scott here. Let's do some math. 0.21% of gamers watch gaming presentations. That's just a fact. They like getting new game reviews thrown in their faces. Now, twice as many watch E3, the biggest time of year for game oh. reviews. It's all about seeing all these games you've never even dreamt of before. That's the point. Now, we remove the point, and we get E3 2021. Oh, look, it's my favorite time of year to be pissed. <laughs> After an event like E3 2019, anything was possible. Anything. So E3 2020 didn't happen because of the Molescom outbreak. Many assumed it wouldn't be back for 2021, but those people didn't take not that into consideration. E3 2021 occurred as a virtual event. Huge different from other years. No live press conferences with large audiences. Just pre-packaged video showcases. They get the same gist as the press conferences across. We just don't have the life of the party. Much like with 2019, Sony wasn't participating. True. And EA does their own thing separate from E3, but instead of it occurring the week before, it's a month later. Well... At least Verizon's here. As per usual, <laughs> true. With each major company showcase and oh, yeah, them on a scale of one forward. to five knee slaps, starting with the Ubisoft Forward event on June twelfth. Ready. Ubisoft press so yeah, he's just going to talk about each and Why every one of them. Ubisoft never really clicks with me a whole lot. And no matter how good their best games are, they never really reach the heights of other companies in my opinion. And I don't really see any massive Ubisoft only fans out there. I only saw two tattoos. But this Ubisoft <laughs> Forward event likes to act like the person watching cares about everything Ubisoft puts out. Like you played Family Feud. Alright, so what's up first? The 42nd Tom Clancy game this year? Oh, E3 is Rainbow Six Extraction, you know, I could fake it and say how this seems like an interesting direction for Rainbow Six, focusing on more supernatural alien type creatures. I'm excited to see more. Or, I could be honest. F*** off, Tom Clancy. Does anybody else <laughs> feel like within the past four years, Ubisoft has been going way too hard with the Tom Clancy games? Like, most of them sell well, but I have never stared a Tom Clancy fan in the eye. And if I, one lone gamer, doesn't care about something in an E3 showcase, that means it's filler, it's unneeded, and shouldn't exist, and E3 is Dude. growing! <laughs> Dude, adding Dude this to the flavor text, that's so true. Titles now, a that Ubisoft actually is true. I'll, yeah. yeah. Game She's player, right, though, looks yeah. looks a whole lot worse than that CGI trailer. I'm sure the game is fine, it's just... Another Tom Clancy game to me, and Ubisoft already announced like four of them yesterday. But oh boy, I can't wait for the next Mario Party. A new Rocksmith title, Rocksmith Plus. I mean, a subscription service, and it's all there was a set, yeah. Guitar, and I can commend that. I think the subscription service model is annoying, but it makes sense from a business perspective for this kind of thing. I respect this. Overall, I give Rocksmith Plus a hat tilt. Riders Republic Same this here. is a fun looking extreme sports title. All different kinds of ways to race. You can explore this really good looking environment. I haven't been bored in 10 minutes. Oh. Yes! You know, after hearing about <laughs> Rainbow Six, myself, what about Rainbow Six? Crossplay was announced for Rainbow Six Siege between PC players and Google Stadia and Amazon Luna. You're doing God's work. While well, Rainbow Six Siege players begged Ubisoft, guys, please, crossplay. I want to play with the boys on Google Stadia. Of course, console crossplay yeah, comes what? later down the line. Here's a DLC trailer, then one of the hosts says how new games aren't the only things to be excited about this year. Didn't this release six years ago? Tons of updates yeah, are going to already release games. Always nice to know, but not that exciting at E3, though, honestly. But at least they ended the update montage saying they're continuing to support a Tom Clancy Ghost Recon game. God, I was getting worried. Just Dance is back! <laughs> oh, yeah, Just Dance. Why does Ubisoft make Just Dance a part of their conference every year but refuse to admit they made Uno? Like, they make yeah, I know! May not be great, Dude, that'd be so good. I honestly the love Uno. Game they published That's probably my favorite game they've made. No, they don't do not, anything new. Like, There's never any real announcement it's good. here. It's good. I like Uno. Just Dance is coming this year. Yeah, I know. I got the alert, too. It's time to get our Viking on. Oh, shit. 
updates coming to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Again, like I said, this is good to know. Like, I like seeing so yeah, I guess he's just going over However, all the game announcements and that's it, which is good. The game. It's actually it's funny. When more than just your core fans are watching, and I just don't feel like talking about updates like this really makes anybody go, wow, I'm in. These feel better safe for like an April Ubisoft board or a July one. When everybody is watching you and you end up talking about what's coming to an Assassin's Creed game where if they didn't buy it already, nothing you say here is probably ever going to convince them to buy it. I just feel like you're wasting everybody's time. Save this stuff for events outside of E3. Can't wait to see that new Smash Brothers character. A look at the films and TV series Ubisoft is working on. The show Mythic Quest and the film Werewolves Within based on the game I've never heard of. Apparently it's a VR Same. multiplayer game from 2015. So that gets a movie but not Rayman Advance. Far Cry 6. You know, I enjoy Far Cry. They're almost always well-made games it's just similar to rainbow six and ghost recon it's almost always here just the fact we're up to six and that's not even counting the side games like primal and new dawn it's just not that exciting to get a new far cry anymore this one still looks quality though the character models look kind of off sometimes but they had the season pass announcement at the end showing the villains from previous games and the fact that far cry 3's expansion blood dragon will be included in some capacity surprised they didn't announce far cry 7 then we move <laughs> into the next announcement. yeah the best oh, one off with Tom Clancy. <laughs> Mario plus Rabbids is getting a sequel. Now, this was leaked just the day beforehand on Nintendo's website, but this is pretty neat nonetheless. Sparks of Hope looks like yeah. a legitimate upgrade in every way. This was definitely the best so part of this show. Obviously more ambitious. However, this does seem like a weird game to blossom into a series. As a goofy one-off that surprised everybody with its quality, yeah, for a sequel, this does still need to prove itself a bit more to me personally. The trailer seemed awfully nonchalant. Like, yeah, this is happening again. I think it might have been cooler to me to see Ubisoft tackle another series of Nintendos for a crossover with the Rabbids, or just if they revealed a bit more. But it looks good, and the developers are always a treat to listen to. The Nintendo segment is over. All right. I hate Ubisoft. <laughs> One final announcement. It must be big. Oh, big yeah. enough to not show gameplay. I actually Avatar. missed this. Well, that kind of stuff. It was Avatar, it was yeah. trailer, I guess, but there's only so much of a trailer I can watch after I realize it's an Avatar game for me to care if you're not going to show the damn game. Well... Ubisoft was Ubisoft. Can't say that was anything I didn't expect, but can't say that made me excited to tell my parents what I did the past hour. Just nothing that interesting. Nothing horrendous. It was just kind of boring. Yeah, I thought Mario the same. Rabbids. That was the highlight of the That show. was the highlight, yeah. Beforehand, definitely deflated it a bit. But yeah, I agree. It wasn't nearly as mind-blowing as it was. It kind of deflated it a little bit. A second time. Well, cool. I'm happy it's here. It isn't blowing me away. I went into this one to be the third tattoo. It made me think that realizing. Nintendo released it to Looks give like them the traction. Gearbox? Surely they will save E3. Was anybody really expecting anything from this? There are certain companies, when I see they're doing an E3 show, I run. Gearbox talked about the Borderlands movie coming up, said Homeworld 3 was in production. What? I actually never saw this one, so... I didn't even know they had it. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, a Borderlands spin-off. Oh, yeah. Homeworld 3 is still in production. Here we are years later, and we keep looking at it like, well, Homeworld 3, this has to happen. Drives of what? Midgard is coming in July. Godfall, the PS5 exclusive launch title that could only run on PS5. Damn it, they pushed through and got it to work on PS4. Then we finish with talking to Kevin Hart about nothing. But is what? In production? Uh, it's not a prequel. It's not a remaster. It's Homeworld 3. It's the next Homeworld. Is that seriously all they show? I think they're trying to tell us something. So I can already kind of tell what some companies are doing here. They wouldn't normally do a press conference, but because this is all virtual, they're displaying the games they would have brought to E3. You know, the stuff playable at the show. They may not have anything worthy of a press conference here, but hey, at least Homeworld 3 is in production. <laughs> The Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. I prefer Xbox and Friends. This took place on June 13th and is the first E3 show after Microsoft bought Bethesda. The first E3 show after Microsoft launched their next generation yeah, of Xbox true. consoles, the Xbox Series X and S. This is a big E3 for Microsoft, which is what we say about every E3, but, but this is actually yeah. And what better way to usher in such a big event than to show off their new mascot? Todd Howard. Starfield from Bethesda. Oh yeah, Starfield. Well, got back in it April looks interesting. All that trailer really showed us was it was a Bethesda game in space. What year is it? Yes, after years of waiting, Starfield to me is still a Bethesda game in space. Like that sandwich, I don't know how to describe it. That's a Fallout sandwich. <laughs> it just looks straight out of Fallout. The game looks like Fallout in space. Of course, that's without seeing gameplay because 
we didn't, but the art design, everything, it does feel like Bethesda through and through, and it's coming out in late 2022. Yeah, I do actually like, like that year. Next year, year Stalker 2. Thing. Son of a When bitch. you can talk about Mario Party. Incredible visual. <laughs> yeah, because the new Mario Party. seems to be only possible on newer hardware. It's seriously impressive. Back for Blood. Oh, what are you guys doing? You're ruining the Back for Blood press conference. There's always going to be Verizon. Xbox Game <laughs> Studios presents in partnership oh, yeah. with Avalanche. A co they didn't show any gameplay or anything. Well, Konami's not going to do it. Well, that was a nothing trailer. I mean, Microsoft yeah. has been announcing loads of games It looks lately. interesting, but always like... have nothing to show of them. And if they're not in a pre-established franchise, I'm so... Sorry, it's hard for me to get excited without seeing gameplay. I see a Thieves update. Oh, yeah. The Caribbean. I like the satire, though, how he says, like, he doesn't care about something. Because it's, like, Pass, making fun of people. Thing for a while now. This is the announcement of the latest game being available on the service today. Cool. I mean, Xbox Game Pass adds games every two minutes, so if they talk about how they're adding games to the service at E3, it's not like, oh my god, what? <laughs> that also may be because I've been paying for this service for 36 months and I've turned on my Xbox four times since. Battlefield 2042 gameplay. I'm gonna be honest, this was one of the best gameplay trailers from E3 I've seen. No need for fancy CGI that makes you go, wow, they must really care if they're lying to me. Just True. Really exciting gameplay. This all looks excellent doesn't mean I'm gonna play it. 12 minutes. Doesn't mean I'm gonna play 2019 it. conference, and this pretty much tells me the exact same thing. Psychonauts 2 is always a pleasure to see for the 12th time. More Bethesda <laughs> games are coming to Game Pass. They weren't there already? Well, this is where the Bethesda juice is kicking <laughs> in. It's time for updates on their garbage. Fallout 76 and the Elder Scrolls Online updates. I always win E3 bingo. Party Animals, a multiplayer oh, yeah. arena type game between all kinds of characters with snouts. I can tell this game was added to the lineup to help Microsoft meet the quota. Hades is coming to Xbox. <laughs> That's great to see. With it's more surprising Halo. this game wasn't on anything but Switch and PSC for the longest time, but it definitely deserves to be played by all. Uh, you ever have those games from press conferences that you completely forgot about? Somerville is coming. True. Then we have this big segment oh, yeah, on Halo, Halo Infinite, showing a bit more of the story in multiplayer. The game was delayed from a 2020 launch into holiday 2021, and being honest here, the original gameplay they showed, I, I thought it looked pretty alright. Visually, it wasn't impressive, but it wasn't bad. But the delay was obviously the right move, as the game looks substantially better, and this is shaping up to be a solid Yeah, game. true. And it's gonna have an epic campaign. Diablo 2 Resurrected, great remake with tons of value here. But where are the rats? A Plague Tale Requiem. Oh, yeah, Holy the rats. Shit. I never thought about what next gen could do for rat tech. Far Cry 6, because I was begging to see more. <laughs> Far Cry has a strange tendency to have a super serious trailer, like at the Ubisoft Ford, and then the next trailer is like, whoa, f my grandpa, dumbass. Slime Rancher 2. Oh, yeah, Slime uh, Rancher 2. We have a snowboarding game, Shredders. Now, this is cool because we just don't get snowboarding games like we used to. The problem is, all this trailer did was show snowboarding. That's reassuring. But what makes this game unique? What makes it different? Because this new console can display up to 40k rats. There's no excuse. Atomic Heart, this looks like a wild game. I just oh, didn't yeah. know what I was looking at half the time. Replace, this has this... Oh, yeah, I love this. crazy lighting and depth and all that. It truly Yeah, this stuck. looks awesome. Chronicle gets an update. Among Us is coming to Xbox. Among and Union Chronicle, the spiritual successor to Suikoden. See, Microsoft likes to throw on games to make everybody go but your xbox <laughs> the ascent uh pretty much any co-op game in this angled top-down style i don't know why it's usually an automatic turn off for me i have very specific turn ons age of empires 4 for okay. pc then the outer worlds 2 is announced via a tongue-in-cheek trailer poking fun at the fact it's being announced too early yeah that's trailer, funny but it does highlight my biggest problem with xbox right now raise your hand if you remember the name of the new game by avalanche announced in this press conference Come on, I was trying to make a point. They are non-stop announcing games too early, with nothing to show, and it's just getting irritating at this point. Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to Xbox Series X and S, which is great. This game looks super yeah. cool, and to have it on something other than a PC, which for some reason I just can't use, will be awesome. Forza Horizon 5. Yeah, that got announced and will release before the next mainline Forza Motorsport, which was announced in 2020, and the next Fable game, which is being oh, yeah, the same developer as Forza Horizon 5. Because my god, logic makes <laughs> sense. Horizon 5 looks gorgeous set in mexico they have it does look pretty good it's just a car game, game car games like this no, just always look the cool. same to me graphically i still think a forza from five years back looks fantastic so there's only so much more they can constantly improve on phil spencer comes out phil thanks for the rats and things out on red <laughs> the vampire co-op shooter by arcane and bethesda thank you well okay that's over. It's an odd game to end things out on. No gameplay or anything. If I would compare the idea of this to anything, it's like Left 4 Dead, but with fangs. And they already showed Left 4 Dead's spiritual successor in this presentation with Back 4 Blood, so it's like, why act like this is the one game to end it all with? 
There were a good few games they showed in this presentation I think would have made for a better closer. Well, that was Xbox. The general consensus online was that was a great show. Uh, my opinion's a little lower, and I've had this mentality with Xbox for quite a few years now. Xbox has rarely had a bad press conference. Even their worst ones from the Kinect days, those are treasures. When an Xbox showcase is bad, it's glorious. When it's good, it's kind of just generically good to me. They almost always tout how this is the largest and most diverse lineup in Xbox history, saying, we're gonna show you 50 games, but 40 of them you've already seen and are just completely random out of nowhere titles you're gonna forget about in five minutes. I always feel like Xbox showcases games that are kind of the table scraps from what Nintendo and Sony aren't showcasing in their presentations, but they are making great strides with exclusive games. Just so many of them are just CGI trailers. True, nothing yeah. nothing to go off of. We know Fable yeah, and Dark and Hellblade 2 I agree and with that. in the Outer Worlds 2 and State of Decay 3 and Contraband and Redfall and Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 are coming out, but we basically know nothing and just have CGI trailers of them, and I'm just sick of it. And Bethesda really didn't have much going on here. Like, if Xbox didn't purchase them and they had their own press conference, what the hell would they show? Yeah, but what? Xbox Game Pass was pushed heavily here, with most of the games being right. really a what part of the service, show? which is fantastic. Overall, Xbox, as usual, had a good one here. It's just... It didn't make me feel anything. It was mostly stuff I fully expected and nothing that crazy, but it was pretty all right. Three knees slip. Square Enix held their Square Enix presents oh, yeah. an hour after Xbox. Well, that doesn't give me much time to recover. I can only be so lukewarm. I get really tired after seeing something okay. Well, Square's presentation starts off with the reveal of a new game by Eidos Montreal, Guardians of the Galaxy. Please tell me more for two hours. So Square Enix published the Marvel's Avengers game, which wasn't really what a lot of people wanted. Thus, the idea of them doing another Marvel game isn't all too thrilling. However, this one... Oh, yeah. Guardians just seems to be a well-made single-player adventure. Solid visuals, voice acting, gameplay looks decent enough. I think this will be a quality game. This demo wouldn't end. I think this, this demo wouldn't would end. Makes sense, because I heard the, the rest that you said, like, showcase, mobile games. After this was all done, they announced the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. They're re-releasing the first six Final Fantasy games on platforms that already have most of them. Square Enix fans, does this ever happen to you? All right, listen, <laughs> what? I get it. Square likes to what? release a lot what? of their old games on PC okay. and mobile. Sometimes it feels like they do it there first. not expecting that. Why aren't these on consoles right now? They were console games. The consoles currently don't have any means of playing any of these games. Mobile platforms have all these games already. Oh, yeah. You can play one through six on smartphones right now and PC has four of them. What the hell is the point of any of this? Legend of Mana's opening cutscene is played. Uh, Avengers get some updates. A ton of mobile games are detailed because the E3 audience loves it. Square, my fingers are too dirty to play mobile games. Babylon's what? Fall is shown, a Platinum Games production. It's a live games as a service title and looks like ass. I'm sold. A ton on Life is Strange, a remaster collection, then the next entry, True Colors. Life is Strange is something that you're either into or you're not, and no trailer for any game in the series is ever going to convince you otherwise. Then one final game a new final fantasy spin-off stranger of paradise oh final yeah fantasy Origin. it's supposed to be a modern action game based on the first final i've, fantasy I've game. seen clips of this this game could be anything it doesn't feel like final fantasy it looks like a generic hack and slash like a fine way to end things i guess at least they showed us something new but describing the game an action rpg based on the world of the first final fantasy my mind goes on a lot more cool places than what this trailer is and that was the doesn't you say chaos a lot in the trailer i didn't like it what was the point of this? The more time yeah. passes, the less Square Enix seems to have it all together. They most seem to be replicating a lot of the problems Capcom had a few years back, where they were trying so desperately to appeal to America. When in reality, if you just do what people know you for, you'll be just fine. Like, who's thinking, oh, Square Enix, I want them to make Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, true. I didn't think the presentation was, was terrible, but it was most certainly not good. There were some announcements, and they weren't half bad. Guardians looks quality, and I feel like Stranger of Paradise will be all right. But everything in the middle, it's like, look at the sandwich. There's pure mucus in the middle, but the bread's okay. Yes! Guys, I'm signing up for Verizon. They're gamers too! Verizon V3 show on June 14th. What do you think they're gonna announce? It doesn't matter. They're gamers! Verizon is one of those companies who know nothing about gaming, but they're tech-based, so they see how large gaming is, and they feel the need to jump in on the conversation. Just look at how companies like Google and Amazon talk about gaming compared to Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft. They don't get it. They always overact about gaming, trying to overcompensate to prove to people that they respect and love video games, when in reality, they know absolutely nothing about them. Gaming isn't a passion. It's a right! I don't know, maybe they'll announce the PlayStation Vita will be under Verizon, though. Well, 5G <laughs> data speeds are here, and they're gonna help us do esports and develop games and watch games online. I just care so much about gaming and gamers and <laughs> video games. This was an advertisement for Verizon Internet.
and it was still better than Gearbox. Ooh. Capcom had the showcase later. Oh yeah, Capcom. Going to show I'm guessing he's gonna end with Nintendo because it did end with Nintendo. And an update on their fighting games. I wonder what they're gonna. Well, no, Capcom. Start off with Resident Evil yeah. Village. Yeah, Capcom came after. So came after Nintendo. Out, they say. The game is already out. Here's Monster Hunter Stories 2. So Monster yeah, he's going to talk village. about Nintendo. The thing. Monster the Hunter Rise one. gets an update. The Grace Ace Attorney gets a trailer. Then a Capcom employee explains the trailer. Then an eSports. What the hell was that? <laughs> Half a slap. All right, so a virtual only E3. I gave Xbox a golf clap. Uh, the rest of the conferences gave me the clap. It's up to Nintendo. And Bandai Namco presents House of Ashes to save... Oh, Game no, Bandai, Bandai Namco one of them shows one was the last one. The Nintendo Direct for E3 2021 occurred on June 15th, of course. Being the Nintendo fan I am, I was expecting utter dog sh**. It's structured just like any regular Nintendo Direct, which is interesting. Normally, their E3 Directs are very different pacing and style-wise. The first announcement is Kazuya oh, from yeah. Tekken is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Cool. Fine. This yeah. This is a character announcement that doesn't upset me. It's just doesn't do much for same me. here yeah, have three i actually agree with that their main gimmick is i don't think it's a waste of a slot game. though so the fourth time it's, it's not an but i do Most agree with that i don't i thought i thought it was cool but not really interesting second and smash brothers so this doesn't feel like a oh my god what moment also tekken was already technically represented in smash via the heihachi me costume it doesn't mean i think it should have been the only tekken representation it just makes the character's inclusion a bit more underwhelming than if tekken wasn't represented at all i'm always happy to see new smash characters but i'm almost ready to see them wrap things up speculating who will be yeah smash same become boring to me i agree 100 percent to character have been thrown out anybody I... can make it in which on one hand is incredibly exciting but maybe Makes each character reveal a bit more disappointing. Yeah, I agree. Character you I actually agree. No dignity. However, this was a perfectly fine addition. Just nothing that exciting. I actually person. agree with Life Scott there. Master Collection. I actually 100% agree you know, with that. After the 14th time we've seen these games at E3 this year, I think they finally won me over. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming to Switch. You know, after the 14th time we've seen this game at E3 this year, I think they finally won me over. Now, actually, this is a cloud version of the game. They don't make it obvious, but you see this little text at the bottom stating, Buckle up, the future's here. Cloud versions aren't fun, Nintendo. It's not like, oh, they're actually bringing this game to Switch. It's they're doing the bare minimum to make this game playable on Switch. <laughs> I know why they throw these games in their directs, because seeing big names like that and seeing big graphics like that get you excited at first, but then when it's revealed that it's nothing but a cloud version, the carrying me drops to sub zero. Worms Rumble on Switch comes with an exclusive patchwork barrel. Oh, yeah. Where are my stock options? <laughs> Astria Ascending? Sure. Two Point Campus? Double sure. So you're talking about these four games sort of rapid fire via this weird headline? There's something for everyone on Nintendo Switch. Yeah, everyone. If the world had to pick between only four games, I think we know which ones. Super Monkey Ball oh, yeah, and Banana Mania. Ball. So this is amazing. Celebrating the 20th anniversary of the series, Banana Mania is pretty much a perfect return to form, taking 300 levels from Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe. Yeah, so it is remastered. They did Banana Blitz HD two years back, which obviously was just to test the waters for the series. Now they're going in and giving us what we want, a good game. This seems to be the perfect Monkey Ball experience. This is great. They'll f it up somehow. <laughs> Mario Party. Oh, so yeah. Much I'm pissing happiness. Pretty much a best of collection for Mario Party. With yeah, honestly, from my re I remember reacting to this. I was like, okay, another Mario Party game. I didn't really care about it, but I didn't realize it's another Mario Party game. <laughs> like, jeez. And they're bringing back five game boards from the N64 titles, which is perfect. At their worst, these game boards are far better than the best modern Mario Party board. Plus, it has online play. It uses Super Mario Party's engine, which yeah. is great. This it is looks amazing. great, yeah. So I think five game boards is a really weak number. It works. But when these are remakes, I think it's fair to want more than five. I mean, Mario Party games during their peak have constantly had more than five game boards. And they were all brand new. Plus, the mini games are taken from across the entire series. The game oh, yeah. Are these are re support, reused, so Nintendo. they could have done Mario more. Parties were pretty sexy. But honestly, that's really my only what? the game. I think I'd want at least eight to ten game boards, but five... It suffices. But like Monkey Ball, they'll f*** it up somehow. <laughs> the Mario Party team are the only developers I wouldn't let perform surgery on me. Next up, they say Metroid Prime 4 is still in development. I'd be too if I didn't exist. But here's a different... Oh, game. yeah. Metroid Prime... Metroid Dread. Oh. Metroid 5? Oh, my God. A new 2D Metroid. This looks so clean. It does look really good. What the f***? Metroid Dread, after being <laughs> this mysterious entity for almost 20 years, a 2D Metroid Nintendo's been teasing all that time that's been cancelled, uncancelled, cancelled again. It's happening now. 
and it looks good. Yeah, it looks it's really good. Of 2D Metroid, and it's developed by Mercury Steam, the developers of Metroid Samus Returns, and they look like they're nailing it. It's so great to see this series get so much more support as of late, but people have to put their money where their mouth is. If they want more stuff like this and not 10 more Mario Party superstars, buy it. If you don't, damn it, I will. Another platter <laughs> of games here. Uh, Just Dance 2022. You really blindsided me with that one. True, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And it. Who's heard of a sizzle reel of two things? Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Man, what gives this more value to have its own headline compared to the others? Mario Golf Super Rush comes out in two yeah, minutes. Yeah, interesting. Nintendo spends time at E3 on games releasing so soon, but they did reveal free updates are coming. That sort of means to me this game is launching in an incomplete state. Yeah, I, n I noticed that too. I was like, oh, they're really doing that. Like, I mean, it's Nintendo, but yeah. They're doing that. They're releasing it in like an unfinished state. And then just adding to it later. WarioWare is back! Oh yeah, WarioWare. Yes! This one focuses on the actual WarioWare characters in the micro games, each with their own abilities. So there are multiple ways to complete each micro game, which is a really cool idea. I am a bit cautious though. I'm worried this format limits how crazy the micro games can be. Looking at WarioWare smooth moves, that game goes wild with the Wii Remote, and I've always felt the Switch was a prime candidate for WarioWare with the Joy-Con. Instead, at the moment, this is something that could have been done on any Nintendo platform, though it is a cool idea and I'm gonna pick it up. I'm just interested to see how much variety this concept brings with it. Shin Megami Tensei 5? I blacked out. <laughs> so this is a huge upgrade from Shin Megami Tensei 4 in the 3DS, and it's genuinely looking to be another solid RPG to call the Nintendo Switch its home. The Danganronpa series comes to Switch alongside Fatal Frame Made in a Black Water, the Wii U Fatal Frame. I just bought the insanely expensive European physical edition, and my dreams of becoming a financial advisor are crumbling. <laughs> so I played this one a bit, and it wasn't really my thing, but I'm willing to give it another go on Switch. Uh, weirdly enough, it's coming to all platforms. Again, so happy I invested in what I thought was going to be the only way to ever play this game. <laughs> the first part of Doom Eternal DLC comes roughly four years too late. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, which is a great game for Switch, even if the graphics are looking a little rough. Strange Brigade. I remember them announcing this game too. That's right, even my mom came up to me and said, did you see they announced Strange Brigade for Switch? Mario Bros. Really? Sparks of Hope. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a joke. Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Oh my god, this is so nice to see. Even if you're not a fan of Advanced Wars, this game gives loads of hope that Nintendo is really willing to revisit fan favorite franchises. It's a remake of the two games on Game Boy Advance, and I would have preferred if they remade the games exclusive to Japan. But I think the game looks gorgeous. The 2D and 3D art are both amazing. It's just a warm and fuzzy feeling to see this franchise back in some way. Now, it's time for some Zelda. Oh yeah, Zelda. 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 HD is coming out. What a headline. They talked about nothing new, and this was quite possibly my biggest disappointment of the show. Skyward Sword HD seems to basically be adding nothing. They had nothing of note to discuss, no enhancements, no yeah, changes, true. no quality of life improvements. It's just Skyward Sword in HD. You can play with buns if you want. Compared to Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, this is a huge disappointment of a remaster, even graphically. With those, they went in and spruced up a ton. A Skyward Sword HD looks like you're just playing Skyward Sword on an emulator. As all the Game & Watch is revealed, it's pretty much the exact same thing as the Mario Game & Watch released for Mario's 35th anniversary, except this one includes Zelda 1, 2, Link's Awakening, and a reskin of the Game & Watch game Vermin. It's okay, cool, a reskin of this, Vermin. This is pretty much it for Zelda's 35th anniversary, which feels really strange. Like, this is all you're willing to do? Reusing Game & Watch shells and giving us a 30th way to play Zelda 1? I like this kind of junk, but it doesn't really get me going, especially after we already got the Mario one. This isn't a new form factor or anything, so it's not like, oh boy, I can't wait to see what this device is going to be like. But we finally yeah. get on a look at the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Lots of new stuff yeah. to play here. Uh, specifically the sky, what looks like time manipulation, goo. Truly goo. fantastic looking game but they still gotta be hiding this game's main gimmick. The title is yet to be revealed, and Nintendo says they don't want to say what it is because it'll spoil something, so there's obviously a lot they aren't sharing. And whether release date of 2022 and what I think will be late 2022, we'll be speculating for a while. That was pretty good. Some weird choices for games shown and the oddball scissor reels of there's so much to play on Nintendo Switch. But overall, some great stuff here. Yeah. While watching, this was a treat. Looking back, there aren't a ton of big games, uh, but games that we've wanted for a while. Advance Wars, WarioWare, a good Mario Party, Metroid Dread. Not the best Nintendo E3, but a damn good one. But I actually good. agree with that. might have buttered me up. So that was E3 2021. 
as each day went on, Ubisoft show kept getting better and better. Most companies <laughs> are treating E3 as more so an True. excuse to give updates on their well-being rather than putting together a show that'll blow gamers' minds. Nintendo seems to have a really solid idea as to what constitutes as an ending announcement or a big announcement in general the other company is that's true yeah announcement. but i think it's because they've been doing this for so long gearbox Square Enix. like i feel like this is kind of new for some other showcases when they have no reason to you're wasting your fans time i think e3 went to all these companies and almost begged them to do something this year being a virtual event let's be honest there's no real need for these companies to even participate in e3 like, what are they even participating in? Live streaming their showcase at a certain time? They can do that whenever. True. It still has value because more people were watching something like the Square and Capcom shows because they were a part of E3. If they weren't, not nearly as many people would even tune in. But when this is right. the overall quality, E3 becomes more and more questionable. He's now, right. Like Nintendo were good, and those are the main ones you look forward to. But without Sony, even without EA, without those big booths and not treating each showcase as the company is putting their best foot forward and trying to win everybody over, instead giving updates on your esports initiatives or DLC plans, E3 just didn't feel Yeah, it didn't feel year. worth it. Yeah. I still wouldn't trade it for the world. Even at its worst, E3 is our time it's a communal effort to band together to say wow didn't that stink you know, <laughs> true like having all these showcases spread out across the summer the one week of just non-stop gaming talk it's magical no matter how many times it disappoints me i'm always gonna look forward to the next e3 yeah there's always next year for Ryzen. <laughs> i'm looking forward to their showcase at e3 2022 where i pray they announce their new logo and it looks like this it sneezed during the <laughs> So yeah, honestly, this was actually an enjoyable video. I liked the whole format of this video where it's just him going over the entirety of E3 and just going over every show and his opinions on what the show, how the shows were and, you know, what they were like, like what they announced. And it adds to the comedy too, because he can just make fun of what's being announced. Not only that, I like the little knee slap ratings, the, those are cool. And yeah, honestly, I also like the commentary on just what E3 is as a whole. Like, for example, not showing gameplay and just doing the animated trailers and then showing... And then also just discussing how it makes a game look bad or it just doesn't... And also just, like, all the press, press conferences together. Like, for example, saying that, you know, some of these probably just were there to sh do updates and not actually reveal any games and stuff like that like i and i also like the satire too it adds to the comedy like for example like oh i don't care about this so it's like filler you know it, it yeah it's kind of true when you really think about it like there were people uh who will be oh like i don't care about this so it's just filler like i like that uh, and for what he talked about the nintendo thing with smash i 100 percent agree 100%. I, I literally cannot wait for all the DLC characters to come out because he makes a really good point on exp he, he makes a really good point on the fact that any character can get in, which is exciting, but it can also be very disappointing if it's the character that you don't want or, you know, don't really care for. And yeah, honestly, I'm Smash, I, I really can't wait until all the characters are announced because I feel like you know, you're just what you're just giving yourself disappointment, or what's the term? Like hyping yourself up for disappointment because you know the character might not get. It. It's just, it's not, it's not great. And yeah, honestly, it, I'm kind of tired of Smash at this point. It, yeah, I, yeah, that's my opinion. But uh, yeah, I, I'd say this is enjoyable. The editing is good. I like I like the pacing. The pacing was good. It was a good video. I enjoyed it. I I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the Black Mirror for my channel. See you next one. Bye.